Father, thank you that there's a generation rising who are going to fundamentally change humanity. And that this next century is going to be the most unusual century in human history. The Lord, you've shown it to all your prophets. The Lord does nothing unless he reveals it to his prophets, his people, that we're in the time of great change and the time of the divine intervention where earth is going to change fundamentally, socially, economically, technologically. Within a century, the world will be radically, radically like heaven. And I thank you, Father, that you've ordained this and Isaiah saw it. <laughs> and Enoch's working on it, <laughs> Elijah, that there's a culmination of the ages. And I thank you that you chose where we live and when we live, that we would be alive in the time of great change. And I honor that. I value that. And Father, I pray right now that great faith and great grace would come upon each person here, each person listening, that they would begin to manifest the truth that we are in Christ and we are in the Trinity and the Trinity is in us and it's happened, something has happened beyond going to heaven when you die there is a new creation on earth right now and death is defeated so we come under tonight the, the testimony of the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ okay, so We've been talking about perichoresis, and for those of you who don't know the term, perichoresis is the, 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 the term theologians used in the third century to describe the Trinity, that God is a community in himself, and God is love. Now, when you start with the fact that God is family and God is love, the way the gospel looks changes, because the goal of the Trinity is not judgment or even removing sin is inclusion judging sin and the cross was the means to inclusion but wasn't the the focus it was the thing they had to do to get us where we or we should have been and the churches had such a focus on the cross and propitiation and all these other things that it's, it's not looked at the purpose of the cross which is that one died for all therefore all died in him and he swallowed humanity into himself. And he included us back where we should have always been. Now, of course, people can choose to live outside that if they want, but they choose an illusion. Because the reality is God is for us. God is not our enemy. And he loves us. So when you come from that perspective of the gospel, that God was in Christ hugging the world to himself, though we've never been his enemies, we are enemies in our minds, that he loves us, then when you see that, you start to see, okay, heaven then is an extension of that love. In other words, we're included with all of heaven. And then heaven isn't so scary anymore. Because it's just a big, big, big family. And it's a very good day. It's just a very good day. It's a really nice day. Just think of a really nice day, and that's eternity. Just really nice, beautiful day, okay? So I'm going to press in now to engage in wisdom, and I want us to go deeper with wisdom because I feel the Lord is showing me, or I don't feel, and that's me just like fudging it. I'm going to be blunt. I have seen a dimension in heaven that you can only access through wisdom. Because the things that are in there are so powerful that you have to walk with wisdom to walk in them. You cannot, you know, we've known this. There has to be a time where we see stuff that, that, that like the Celtic saints saw and the old Catholic saints. But there's a realm with wisdom where even your words can create worlds. It can create realities, I mean by that. It can create human body. It can change genetics. Okay. All right, let me put it another way then. He, wisdom, whether it's the Holy Spirit or Jesus or the Spirit as a being, will help you manage your money, will help you make right decisions, will help you have long life, will help you know which way you should go, will expand you beyond your education 
and we'll put a frequency on your voice that brings an emanation from Yod Hey Vav Hey. Okay? It will teach you how to manage friendships, boundaries, marriage, relationships. In other words, it is the mobilizer and equipper of you living a much more expanded life. And it's your choice whether you walk with wisdom and the seven spirits or not. Because you're in him, you're going to heaven, everything's okay. But the question is, are you a person of a different spirit like Solomon that says, teach me to govern? Teach me how to lead. Teach me how to govern. Teach me how to be ecclesia. Teach me how to be a world shaper, world changer. Even if I'm in, a, in McDonald's working or wherever I am, or I'm just a grandparent or retired, that I carry the frequency of another world because I refuse to be a merely human being defined by my age or my gender or my education for I've seen something more than that which is the merger between God and man in me. So here's a picture I've got up again. This is, you know, guys know this. This is how the Celtic saints drew God. And the circle is the cosmos enveloped in them. So you've got the three, but they're all one, and us all in the sun. In other words, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. This is true Christianity. Christianity has never been an empire, it's been a dance. If it was an empire, Jesus would have stormed Jerusalem with, with legions of angels and made us force us under the sword to bow. But he never did that because that was not his heart. If that was his heart, we would not have this crazy creation with freedom that we've got we would have a highly regulated control system, but God's not like that. God loves mistakes. God loves life. He loves to dance. And wisdom was created at the beginning, it says, as a play partner. So she played with him at the beginning, and she was an artist. So the first job descriptions we have in Scripture are an artist and a play partner. That should radically alter how we see the Bible, by the way. Oh, something just shot across there then. It was like a flash. <laughs> ah! So listen to this. I love this quote from Baxter Kruger. The Father, Son, and Spirit live in conversation. That's awesome, isn't it? In a fellowship of free-flowing togetherness and sharing and delight. A great dance of shared life that is full and rich and passionate, creative and good and beautiful. See, if you see that as being like what God is like... Why have we built so many boxes? Because that doesn't sound like a boxed situation to me. It sounds like a very energetic, involved, passionate, fun, creative thing. So why has the church just built boxes? And why have we put people in boxes? Us and them, black and white, Jew, Gentile. You know, and, and when, when it's, it's this colourful, ah! <laughs> colourful dance, creative dance. You know, I painted my... Picture in the night watch over there, the shiny cross. When I grab that canvas, I've only painted a couple of pictures. I didn't know if it was going to work. But it works because faith activates. Faith activates your genius. Faith activates your genius. See, the thing is, you are a genius. So you've been given Jesus. And it says, in Jesus are hidden all wisdom, all riches. You know, like we had a genius idea on how to fund this building. This building's funded fully by Patreon. Thank you, Patreon partners. But you know what? More funding's coming in than the building, and it's increasing because people believe in what we're doing. So what we, we've used wisdom to free ourselves from econ economics, local economics, because a lot of the patrons are international. That's wisdom. Wisdom was putting out the podcast when we had a tiny room of people and choosing Podomatic and put it out there for free, giving it out for free, wisdom. Yeah. See, wisdom will guide you to make decisions that will bring reformation and transformation. Yeah. See, wisdom will help you, help you find the right partner, help you find the right strategy for the future, help your, your, your marriage, help your, your, your health, and teach you what to eat and how to exercise and how to live. See, these are kingdom dynamics that we, we can live in this. And it's not a works thing. It's a joy thing. It's for joy, unspeakable and full of glory and transfiguration or transmutation of your matter. So 
C.S. Lewis said this, the whole dance or drama or pattern of this three personal life is to be played out in each one of us. Oh, the drama. <laughs> oh, the drama. God wants to play out the drama in you. That means you're an explosion of three people and you forming the shin with four. Remember I talked about the letter shin? And the whole dance or drama is to be played out inside of you. Think of what I'm saying. Think of it, because I know we've been programmed. We've got boxes from 40 years of listening to evangelical boxes. And, it's, and that will try and reset you back to what you know God's like, which is a tidy altar call and a tidy this and a tidy that. It isn't tidy. It isn't tidy. You know, bam! <laughs> so the goal of the Trinity is inclusion, and if you think the goal of the Trinity is inclusion, that radically alters your perspective of everything. Because he's, see, the evangelical message would be, you're, God can't look at you, you're a sinner, you're, you're a sinner, you're dirty. I was in, you know, we, where were we, Rach? And they were saying that, we walked past them, uh, Chester. Chester. And there was a guy there with his Bible. He looked at me, he pointed at me. I got it. Went, oh, he went, you're a sinner. God's going to burn you. He's going, all this stuff. It's like, man, you don't understand the gospel. You don't understand what spirit you're of. It says God was in Christ, hugging the world to himself, not counting the sins of the world against them. That's the gospel, is that he's included you. What are you going to do about it? And being born from above then is accepting what he's already done. He's already done it, but will you accept it? Or to put it another way, it's like a treasure that you put in your field. So the whole mind-boggling act of creation is driven with the desire to share the great dance with us. See, what am I saying is that you don't have to, misery doesn't have to be the fruit of your life. It doesn't have to be. I, I battle misery often, but I give it a good kick in with an inflatable hammer <laughs> that squeaks. Because we've got a choice in Wales whether to be miserable or not. Or wherever people are listening, it's a choice. And you transcend it. We overcome the world by faith. Faith transcends the tyranny of the temporary. And we move into the expansion. Yeah! I've chosen to fight misery and stood against it over and over again and embraced mystery. But listen, we are from the happy God, and God is happy. God is infinitely happy and infinitely glorious, and he's inside of us. And he's, he's, he's having a good day. So listen, Colossians 3, 4. We are being co-revealed in the same bliss. We are joined in oneness with him. See, I love these new translations that are capturing the heart of the gospel. The togetherness, one new man, one new being. In him, we live. In him, pray in the spirit. Ah. <laughs> so Graham Cook says this, and God has called you to see, see the invisible and do the impossible. God has not called you to do the things you can do. Hello, boom, mic drop. <laughs> boom. He's called you to do the things that you'll never be able to do in a million years. Come on, poo, kaka pow, pum, why? Feel it, boom. Boom, he's called you to do the things that are impossible for you, that you cannot do in a million years. Pow! Right, rubber. I wish I had that inflatable hammer right now. <laughs> because God's called you not to live in the limitations that your genetics and parents and your health or anything else is defining you. Because it's a false covering, a false house, a false genetics. Come out from your father and mother. Come out from your name. Come out from your country and come under my name, my country and my genetics. That is the quest for this generation, that this generation moves beyond. So we've been enveloped in the, the, the seven lampstands, you know, and the stars in your hand is government. Is, this is called the trampling dance. I told you, peri pateo, the pateo means, means the dance that tramples on the enemy. It's the, it's the same as, you know, trample on the enemy, crush the enemy under your feet. So when you dance in the seven, in the ecstasy, overshadowed by the Father, you start to hold the government of the stars. Stars represent government. That's why you see stars on the EU banner. You see stars on 
wizards' costumes. You see stars on the American flag. That's why it always talks about the stars fell from heaven. So the person that dances amongst the seven starts to govern the stars. You're called to govern and dance amongst the lampstands. See, these are the words, Revelation 1, of, the, of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. So you have to be the person in your thinking where you position yourself in this dance with God and you go, I have the seven and I have the seven stars because he is the blueprint of us. This is just one form of Jesus showing us. It's a parable, a picture, a nursery rhyme. It's actually a world. What I'm saying is they represent wisdom, counsel, might, knowledge of God. All these things interwoven in a, the Trinity and you. And in him you speak then and a sword comes out from your mouth. Because you start to become a different being, worlds within worlds, wheels within wheels, eyes within eyes, and you have the seven spirits. You, you have them. You've been given them in Jesus. This is the gospel. See, we're living so short of the gospel. The gospel means as he is, so are we. And I love this picture. It's awesome. It's awesome. And the word... Have the seven spirits is echo. It means joined, possessed, or to be bonded. Revelations 5, 6 says, The lamb having seven horns and seven eyes. Horns represent power. Eyes represent multidimensional insight. Now, he's not literally a lamb. And he doesn't literally have seven horns or seven eyes. He's a man. There's a man in the Trinity. A human being. But these are parables and pictures of the dimensional framework we are meant to operate within, which is the, the, the heart of a lamb, which is gentle and kind and friendly. Friendly. That's a new thing we should try in the mystic movement. Seven horns means the power to do the thing you see. So you've got insight into multi-dimension. So you don't, know, you don't think like normal people do. You're seeing beyond the days of the week. You're seeing the flows of space and time. You're understanding your genetic history, your future, your past, your present. Now, if you're thinking, oh, I don't act like that now, then repent. That's what repentance is. See the doors in the floor. You say to God, I'm not multidimensional. Forgive me. You, that, go lower. Say, Lord, I'm not, I can't feel the ebbs and flow of time. Something's wrong. Forgive me. Reconnect me to the golden strand. I feel the ebbs and flow of time all the time. That's how I know where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to do. I mean, I was hearing like a dozen people's thoughts when I was preaching to 350 people. And I was answering people's thoughts, not in a rude way. I just said, oh, one of you said this. I answered like a dozen questions because knowing their thoughts, he spoke. So that should be normal. Repent. That should be normal. It should be normal to know one another in the spirit. I'm not talking about invading. They sent out a question. It wasn't me invading them. They were thinking it and projecting it. And I caught it. That's different, right? I'm still respecting their space. But I heard the flow. <laughs> so having the seven eyes. And they rested upon him. It says in Zechariah 3.9, upon the stone of seven eyes. So Jesus is the stone, Right? And he has seven eyes. Seven is the number of perfection. So even seven is a mystical number. Seven means the end of the week, which is rest. It means the divine number. God rested on the seventh day. And seventh means perfection. So God wants you to have perfect vision, perfect insight, perfect counsel, perfect understanding, perfect strength. Strength to be all you should be. This is the resource that he's given us. This is the covering he wants to put over us. This is the order of Melchizedek being revealed in us. I know, I know. You're thinking, how do I close the gap between where I am and where we're meant to be? You do it by changing the way you think. Because I do things all the time that break from my limitations. I'm an evidence of it. I remember when God started using me years ago in Wales with this other guy. And someone stood up in the, one of the first prayer meetings we had and said, God, why did you choose him? Why did you choose Justin? I was in a, I was in a conference with hundreds of pastors in Denmark, in Holland, sorry. And the guy from the from the, 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 the glory was breaking out and I couldn't contain it. I was overwhelmed by wine. 
and it was a sign and a wonder. But the guy from the front called me a weirdo in front of hundreds of pastors. Years later, I met some of those pastors and they apologized. They said, we missed the window of opportunity. The point I'm making, I have continually broken from human limitation because I've been in a nation where there isn't wine, the prophetic isn't on it. You know, one of the Cardiff leaders said, Bill Johnson's too far out. And I've stood here and Martin Scott prophesied that Cardiff was the city that spat out prophets. That's where I started my first prophecy school. We've had no money. We funded it ourselves. Put the podcast out. People in Wales didn't even know what I was saying after I encountered Enoch because I used to be just drunk. And then I started talking about technology and Isaiah's scroll and rebuilding genetics and rebuilding cities because I drank some wine in heaven and it changed the way I think. And I saw through the timeline and now I'm talking about technology. And people couldn't get to grips with that. And lots of our friends, one of my friends said, oh, Justin's lost the whack. He's gone all serious, they said. (laughs) I'm telling you that, like, there's no reason why I should function like I function other than I believe. And I position myself in his presence. I choose to live in God's presence. I choose to live inside him. And I've been in many, many situations where someone's talking to me about technology or business I had a guy talking to me about the oil industry while I was away and talking about all these technologies and I've just believed that wisdom knows and I'm in wisdom and wisdom is in me. See, God wants us to live beyond our limitations. He wants us to do things that we couldn't do, couldn't say, couldn't think, couldn't be those things. That we have the counsel of God, the wisdom of God, the spirit of God, that we understand oh, the mysteries of the kingdom. So listen to the description. Jesus says, the spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him. The spirit of extraordinary wisdom. The spirit of perfect understanding. The spirit of wise strategy. The spirit of mighty power. The spirit of revelation. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And his words will be like a scepter of power that conquers the world. And his breath, he will slay the lawless one. And his words will bring everyone to awed attention. That's what God wants. That your voice is not weak. But carry something. Carry something. James, you do this already with your music that you're creating. You carry something that makes all those schools buy your CDs. The frequency on your voice and the sound you're creating has gone out. And it's wisdom's built that. And you've got this income stream and and you're impacting people's lives. And people wouldn't even know how much you're doing it because it's done in secret. See, you can be in secret, but God, he can do something so powerful with you. And he wants to reformat and restructure us in this season into greatness. Like what's happening with Janine, you know, with a relocate album. There's nothing like Janine's relocate album. And it carries such a frequency and energy and what Janine's teaching. And this is the power of engaging wisdom. I saw, I believed who Janine was. But But wisdom said, keep making room, keep making space. And I've listened to that. We've listened to wisdom. When we walked in this room, what you're in right now, it had a car there and oil stains. It was just a garage. But we could see, yeah, this is where God's glory could rest. What am I saying? God wants you to have eyes that see, ears that hear. Now. Opening up now. Breaking open now for your family, for your job, for your pension, for your future, for your health. That you are living the creamy flow of God. You wake up to heaven's counsel. You wake up knowing how to spend that day so you don't waste your time. You know how to get energized again. You know how to get alive again. You know how to synchronize with the symphony and what part you're playing in, the ecstasy. You found your place in reality, in his reality. And you're functioning in it. You're moving in it and you're in the dance. And even if that dance is, I'm gardening today. Do you garden with wisdom? Because the dance is in everything. It's in holding your grandchildren. It's in the moment that you know, rather than get annoyed at your, your grandkid at that moment, you hug them. Wisdom's there for you. See, it's not about massive, massive, massive cosmic events. It's about small, beautiful events becoming a cascade, coming a flow that transforms everything around you and who you are, how you think, how you feel. 
richness and wealth, poverty broken off your DNA, the lies of the system that hold back your income under the line, smashed. Your belief about what it means to be excellent, recalibrated. That you start to see who you really are. That you are glorious. You cannot be mediocre. You can never be mediocre. And that the seven spirits rest on you and your words start to have power that conquers the world. So Graham Cook says, when you act like God, you are just being yourself. See, this is not the message that we've carried in the church. But the joining of God and man is a scandal. And this, all the old theologians understood this. You know, St. Arrhenius said this, Christ became what we are in order to bring us to what he is in himself. This is scandalous and massive in its implication. That means your relationship with the angels has totally changed. You're a charybic structure with angels emanating out of you and a center of government and their activity just like God. You're a throne with wheels and eyes. You're an electric lightning being. You can actually change atmospheres, change what goes on. You can skip the rules of time, bend time, bend space. Uh, yeah, see, it's, it's getting on your body. That's it. That's it. You're getting hit by it. And it's been poured out on the flesh to break open consciousness. This is called higher consciousness. What I'm preaching is higher consciousness. See, Einstein said you can't change the world with the same level of consciousness that created the problems. In other words, you need a higher consciousness to change it. Pow! And the higher consciousness is called, New Ages call it, Christ consciousness. <laughs> Just because the church doesn't. <laughs> So Christ consciousness, so even throughout the world, you know, I, I shared this beautiful picture um, that Akiana drew when she was 10, you know, and it's amazing, isn't it? I think she was 10, that this is how I see wisdom, wisdom looks like this girl to me, I've seen her looking old, I've seen her looking like a grandparent, I went through a season where she would be like a, like a big fat grandma, with, 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 like you'd see in those old movies, and she'd run after me and grab me and kiss me because I was such a baby. And I've seen, I saw her like that for years. I've seen her as a woman with the cosmos in her gowns and flowers in her hair. And this is what we've been called to walk with, these incredible beings. Our lives should not be mediocre. Our lives don't have to be mediocre. That we, this, this realm is always at hand, is always in you, locked up in you, in my father's house and many mansions which is your body, inside of you is a mansion called wisdom. All the seven spirits already exist within you. To put it another way, the kingdom of heaven is within you. To put it another way, there's a house called wisdom you can go into to be wise inside you. There's a well called wisdom you could drink from inside you. You already have wisdom. Christ has become for you wisdom. Christ has become for you revelation. Inside of you is beyond the prophetic. You have the personhood of the Trinity, the personhood of God living inside of you, ready to help you, looking to help you, looking to work with you. And, the, you know, people are so hungry for revelation that the psychic industry has now become an industry, as they call it, in America alone. It's $2 billion a year. That was in 2010. It's probably way more. And all the people that consult the psychics, do you know who they are? Heads of companies like Google and other things. All the ones that are seeking wisdom are going to a psychic industry because the suns are not appearing. And Daniel said this was going to change. He said a day is coming where the illuminated ones will come and make everyone wise. There's a group of people who are going to walk with wisdom. Wisdom means Sophia in Greek. And Sophia means clarity. In other words, you are meant to walk with the spirit of clarity, not confusion. You've been given... You've been given the spirit of clarity to get out of debt. You've been given the spirit of clarity to transform your marriage. You've been given the spirit of clarity to learn what makes your body work and keeps your frequency high so you're never ill, ever. You've got limitless energy. You know, like chemicals are bad for your body. You know, there's certain chemicals you should not use on your body because of the way it affects the harmonics and frequency. So just as we start to learn how our body works, how it functions, we can live more in life and our marriage can be more in life. See, there's wisdom to know how to have a good sex life. <laughs> but wisdom can come and help you in your marriage to add some extra va va voom and connection. Oh, sorry for those of you who aren't married. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude or anything. 
Brother, those of us who are married, we need wisdom in the bedroom. Glory in the bedroom. You know, we need to always make our lives, our marriages go from glory to glory. The point is, God will give wisdom to us if we draw on it, if we ask for it. And he'll bring glory breakouts. Va, va, boom, swinging from the chandeliers. Coming out with a perm. And I pray that over you too. This has got a thing, look, it's got a spotlight. Spotlight's on you guys. Va, va, boom. Glory in the bedroom. Okay. Second honeymoon. So, you know, the symbols are in the culture. For years, the owl was the predominant symbol. And it was on stationery. It was on artwork, on t-shirts. Because owl is the spirit of wisdom. And God's been speaking wisdom over the earth. And he uses creative people. So for a season, everything was owls. Do you guys remember that? Well, now it's unicorns. Why is it unicorns? You're wearing unicorns right now. I'm going to use my pointer. <laughs> you, this is powerful. Who would have thought I had a laser in my hand? You, and you've got a journal with it on, over there, just over there on the table. And you've got a case with it because it is the symbol of having the seven spirits, the horn. It's the symbol of mysticism. Why is the horn on the unicorn's head? Because it represents the spirits, the seven spirits. It represents being mystical. It's called the mystical animal. It's got motion, insight, and revelation, and understanding. And it's on everything in our culture because God's pouring his spirit out on flesh and awakening humanity to come into a new era of free energy, curing all diseases, getting rid of dementia, expanding lifespans, getting rid of the junk food we've been eating because it's been poisonous and toxic, getting rid of the plastics, they've been poisonous and toxic, freeing us up into being high energy beings where we sleep less, we move more, we've got more creativity, we're not being worn out by the culture and the... Uh. So the unicorn is also playful, which captures the heart of heaven. That heaven is playful, heaven is playful, heaven is joyful, heaven is fun. And it's weird. So this next picture is the four faces, but really this is what we're looking like. See, this is not an image of God, it's an image of you expressing all those things. Or inside of you is all those natures. And I'm not saying you're going to show up to work like that. <laughs> but in the spirit, you've got the dimension of the lion, which is the boldness, the spirit of might, where the roar shakes the earth where you operate from the eagle eyes, where you can see above the problems, you can see above the timeline, you can see above creation, where you've got the ox, the power to plow through, the power to break through and go the distance. And you've got the, the man, which is Jesus Christ, the face and essence and nature of Jesus Christ. It's when you see Ezekiel, where he saw one like the Son of Man, who's got all these angels moving around him, a throne, sapphire stones, sitting on a throne, moving with wheels and eyes, it's actually us, what we look like. It's the blueprint of a fully revealed sun, moving as an emanation of his glory in the cosmos. It's what you look like when you're fully mature and manifested your true nature. God wants us to be illuminated ones and walk with Sophia, walk with wisdom. And this is the generation where she's been poured out like rain. Because the problem is this, it's dangerous to have knowledge without wisdom. See, we're getting more and more knowledge, knowledge, nuclear weapons, space travel, genetics, things. We need wisdom because this has already happened once before in human history where they had knowledge but no wisdom. And it was in the time of Enoch. In the time of Enoch, they built pyramids. They built dimensional gateways. We don't even understand the stuff they built. They built cities underground. You can look them up online. They built technology with lasers. The, 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 uh, the pyramids were cut by lasers. This is just not taught in schools, but it's, it is taught by archaeologists. And you can actually see laser marks. You can see that they didn't even have ash. They used lights. There's even pictures of Egyptians using lights. They're not even the amount of years old that they say they are. The erosion on the Sphinx, for example, is thousands and thousands of years older, which suggests that the Egyptians didn't even build any of it anyway. So where did it come from? It came from an era where the watchers came down from heaven and humans had lots of knowledge but stopped walking with God. And Enoch describes what happens. He said, it seems strange. This is in the Ethiopic book of Enoch, book one. It seems strange that wisdom found no place where she might dwell. Then a place was assigned to her in the heavens. She went forth to make a dwelling among the children of men but found no dwelling place. 
she returned to her place and sat among the angels. This is why we had the, the, the flood. The flood wasn't God getting angry at humanity. The flood was God having to wipe out the mess that was going on and reboot the earth. Buried under the earth are such advanced technologies, stuff we can't even build now. And Jesus had to destroy it because it was interbred between these watchers and humans. And there was the giant, the Nephilims, genetic modification, um, global economic system, globalized designs, globalized communication. The whole thing got severed, destroyed and buried because of the evil that's there when we don't walk with God and wisdom. Are you guys still tracking with me or have I gone too far into Hebraic culture? Yet Enoch saw in heaven, and this is the promise, I saw in heaven, I'm going to finish in a minute, the fountain of righteousness, which is inexhaustible. All around were the other fountains, fountains of wisdom. Those who were thirsty drank this water and they were filled with wisdom. I want to propose to you what's been happening for the last 15 years is people are going up into heaven and what we're doing is we're drinking wisdom. Because there's massive change going on right now. How many of you guys feel like you are so different than 15 years ago? The way you think, the way you see, the way you function, the way you are. Something's happened in God's will where something's cracked open and there's been ascension communities. It says in the last days, many will say, come, let us go up. And as we're going up, we're, we're drinking wisdom and we're being changed because that's what happened to me when I drank Enoch's wine and these other experiences is that I came out of that realm and I'm teaching things nobody taught me. I'm manifesting things that we, from another world. Now, in the last times which we're in, it says this, wisdom shall be poured out like water and the glory of God shall never fail. I love happy eschatology. For he is mighty in all things and in all secrets of righteousness. And all their days shall be full of light and glory and honor. See, we are coming back to the tree of life, which is wisdom. It says, she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are those who hold her fast. In other words, life flows in wisdom. Wisdom brings life. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit from God that is wisdom, brings life. She is the tree of life. So there's a generation that are returning to the tree of life. There are a generation that are returning to the tree of life. This has huge implications, huge what I'm saying. I am saying massive, massive consequential truths right now, okay? But I know we've got to break the box because we're so used to the way it's always been. But God loves changing the status quo. The Bible is full of him doing that and he never changes. He is going to change it again. He says, I will pour out my spirit. You will arise and shine. So Daniel saw this. He was a prototype. And Daniel said, it says this. He was found to have an extraordinary spirit. I want to say to you guys, you have an extraordinary spirit. 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 You're not normal. You've got counsel in you. It's there. It's a realm you shift into and the words flow. You've got it. You've got the solutions. You've got the blueprints to the future. It's already been archived in you. Eternity's in your heart. You're the data storage of future potentials. So Daniel was a prototype. He was given knowledge, discernment. We need discernment. Come on, people. And the ability to interpret dreams, unlock mysteries, and solve knotty problems. No enigma puzzled him. That's the realm God wants us to come in where nothing, no knotty problem puzzles you. No enigma puzzles you. Knotty problem, not naughty, <laughs> naughty, naughty. What are you laughing at? See, this is strategy. This is understanding. Shift, shift, shift. It's not too late. God can redeem the times. You are ageless. And he saw our day and Daniel said, and those who are wise, the people of God shall shine as brightly as the sun's brilliance. And those who turn many to righteousness will glitter like stars forever. Daniel 12, 3. So you're going to glitter. Why is it the glitter's been appearing? We had glitter when we were away. Now, why are we glittering? Why is glitter appearing? Why is gold just appearing in these last years? You know, I've seen it on people's hands, face, necks, all sorts. I've seen weird stuff. I saw a girl spray out gold dust. I've seen gold nuggets. I've seen red gold cover a woman's neck I prayed for. It was all covered in squares that were about a centimeter by a centimeter. Big red squares. The whole neck was covered in it. 
Never seen anything like it. These squares you could peel off just manifested when I touched a head. Why are we glittering? Why are we glittering? Because glitter is a representation of a shining like the stars. The, the government of God, the stars that shimmering. Abraham, your offspring, some will be like sand, but some will be like the stars. Like the, it'll be like sand and stars. You'll be like the stars in the heavens. You will be shimmering and dazzling and shimmering and glowing. Ah, shimmering. Shimmering and dazzling. Glowing. Bam. Even if you just, all you do is you go to the local supermarket. There's something about you. Ah, oh, is there a church in here? That's what Dr. O says. Is there a church in here? Oh, come on now. Stay with me. Stay with me. Come, come back to me. Come back to me. And this is the cry we must have. Paul Keith Davis has said, there is grace coming to our generation that is unprecedented in history. Unprecedented grace. What is grace? God's influence on the heart. In other words, God's going to influence you. Because, you know, listen, you know, we've looked at all these slides. But are we happy in the status quo? Are we happy being where we are? Because what I'm trying to do is create hunger in you and faith. I'm trying to provoke you because I'm taking you on the journey that I'm on. That the psychic industry is going to end. That there is something coming with such clarity. And it's you. It's you. And you don't have to have all the answers. The answer's in you. And it's living in the realm called the kingdom of my father. Where as he is, so are you. And I tell you now, there are things that are going to happen in this next decade that will bring shock and awe on the earth. There are things that are going to manifest in these days and in your home. Because you are all having visitations, you just don't know it. That when you feel that shift, we turn into it and it opens. The lightnings of God are coming to Wales. The lightnings of God are coming to England. The lightnings of God are coming in your home. And lightning strikes. And lightning is Lamed in, in you know, the shape of Lamed, which means the heart that's taught. It means the heart that's taught. And you are going to be a heart that's taught. You are, you're going to function as an owl. You, even in the night, the night watch is opening and owls can turn their heads right round and you'll be able to see all around you. And they've got big eyes so you can see more than any other bird can see. And you'll have the wisdom and the wiseness of the owl and an awakened spirit that when others are asleep, you're awake. And you start to function as the unicorn, that your strength is restored like a wild ox. And you are mystical and able to go the distance. You are able to see things and do things that others can't in play, in dance, in beauty. The mysticism is your inheritance. The horns of God, the strength of God is your inheritance. The illumination, the many faces being birthed out of your body. That your body is transfiguration technology. Your body is the container of, of the unlimited. Your body is the despair of grace into creation. Your body is the house of God. God lives in you. God functions in you. God moves in you. In you are many mansions and it's time to open those mansions up. Open up wisdom. Open up understanding. Open up fear of God. Open up the wonder of God. Open up your body. In you is the cosmos. In you is all created things waiting to be revealed. No longer concealed. You are beyond anything God has ever made. You are the ultimate technology in creation. And he is calling you as sons to dare to believe it all. Dare to believe it all. For with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And I'm telling you now, the systems of poverty are going to break over you. The systems of control and disease are breaking over you. The systems of limitations in families and relationships are breaking over you. Yo! Generational wealth is being released. Generational health and new genetics. Shaka. Shaka moshke neshke neshke. Shaka bamba bamba bumba bamba bamba. And wisdom calls and wisdom cries. She says, Come and I will show you the way. She stands at the gateways of the ancient paths and says, Come, all you who want to know my ways, come walk with me and I will show you the ancient paths. I will show you the ways of God. 
for you have been called and heaven is brooding over you. Heaven is compelling you. You are being drawn by an irresistible force into the depths of yod heh vav -Hey, into the depths of wonder from where you can never return the same. And this is the cry we must have. This is the cry of those who love his name. Thank you, Father. Thank you.